So members, today uh, we're focusing on, as I said at the outset, uh, our students and what they have brought forth uh, in uh, uh, such a way that we're gonna be very much alerted to their concern about sex trafficking. And these uh, young women have been working on this issue for some time. They uh, contacted a number of legislators and got the ball rolling and that shows you uh, what a good uh, future population we can look forward to when they understand an issue so well that they can put together a proposal, bring it forth and have it heard. So I'd like to call to the table a representative Randy Jessup. <laughs> And this is House File 2768. Welcome, Representative Jessup. And if you would move uh, your bill, please, and then we'll proceed to uh, the action. Well, Madam Chair, it is an honor to serve your community and to also present uh, this proposed legislation before you as a bipartisan effort uh, with my fellow representative, Lori Pryor, who I'm assuming will be here shortly along with a number of our representative colleagues who signed on to co-author this bill. As you may recall, um, this legislation that we are looking at today really builds upon the efforts of our representative colleague, uh, Peggy Bennett, who last year went ahead and culminated into Minnesota law, Aaron's Law, which focused upon child sexual abuse. The legislation before you today expands upon her efforts to include education or instruction regarding sexual exploitation. And in the, uh, in the proposed legislation before you, beginning with section 2.15, what has been added here is really to include sexual exploitation as an opportunity for school districts to really educate, uh, build awareness, as well as pursue the prevention of sexual exploitation for our students. Representative Jessup, I'm gonna interrupt you and move your House File 2768 to be officially before us. Please proceed. Thank you, Chair. This proposed legislation, as Chair Erickson has mentioned, is really a culmination of some efforts by some of our fantastic students here in Minnesota, uh, led by Jessica Melnick and her peers and their organization, Girls United, which was established uh, a number of, I want to say about three, four years ago, we'll let them tell the story, but they are from Hopkins High School. And I think we can all be most encouraged, particularly on our committee, to see student involvement in establishing legislation for the education of our, of our children and of our students here in the state. So I'd like to give Jessica and also her uh, her peer, Neela, an opportunity to come before you and tell you a little bit about the story of how this came about. And Representative, Jessica, uh, Representative Jessup, as Jessica and Nyla come forward, I think we'll also have the other girls uh, introduce themselves. So uh, let's start in the front row and uh, come to the table and say your name and your grade in the microphone and then return to your seat. My name is Lily Zedeklik and I'm in 11th grade. My name's Emma Rock, and I'm in 11th grade. And girls, you can move the microphone up. <laughs> you, don't, you don't have to bow. <laughs> there. Um, I'm Emily Kirk, and I'm in 11th grade. My name is Mary O'Neill, and I'm in 11th grade. I'm Sally Reed, and I'm in 11th grade. I am Lizzie Siriani, I'm in 11th grade. I'm Leah Harrell, and I'm in 11th grade. I'm Salma Saeed, and I'm in the 11th grade as well. So, uh, welcome girls. Uh, very good to have you here. And members, I wanna call your attention to uh, statements that they have made in the handout that's in your folder. I think uh, every one of them here uh, present today has made a statement in addition to introducing herself. Uh, welcome girls, um, please say your name for the record and begin to tell us about uh, your project and the reason you brought it forward. 
Madam Chair and members of the House Education Policy Committee, uh, I would like to thank you for inviting us to be here today and hearing this bill before your committee. My name is Jessica Melnick and I'm a junior at Hopkins High School. I'm also the founder and current president of Girls United MN. Girls United MN was started in 2014 as a nonprofit organization that strives to empower and inspire the next generation of girls. Since 2014, we have held many events for the Hopkins and entire Western suburban community. We have held events to promote women in STEM fields, painting canvases with positive affirmations with elementary school girls to put up in their bathrooms, held job fairs, and hosted volunteer events. In November of this year, we hosted a speaker from the Urban Outreach Institute at the U of M who came and spoke to Girls United MN about sex trafficking in Minnesota. Many of the high school girls and I had heard about a suspected uptick in sex trafficking during the Super Bowl and we wanted to learn more. We learned that this problem happens in our state 365 days a year to victims as young as eight years old. We also learned that this problem is not something localized to the metro, suburban, or rural area. This problem is pervasive in all walks of life. Five years ago, a girl at my school was trafficked by one of her classmates. Although I don't know the details of that case, I do know that something like this should not be happening to anyone anywhere. I'm also confident that this incident, and I'm sure many others, could have been prevented. By very conservative measures, a November 2010 study found that each month in Minnesota, at least 213 underage girls are sold for sex an average of five times per day through the internet and escort services. This number does not include hotel, street, or gang activity. That is 213 girls too many. A study done by the Urban Outreach Institute at the U of M found that 14% of men will have bought sex at some point in their lifetime. 14% of men in Minnesota alone. This does not include the majority of the US and one can only think of the statistics nationwide. With the average sex buyer being a white middle class male with children making well over $40,000 a year. Think about that. This could be your neighbor, friend, or even family member. Right now, there are many service providers for victims of sex trafficking after they are out of the life, but the trauma has already hit. We need to stop trafficking before it happens. The organizations that support these victims report that 89% of women and girls used in prostitution wanted to get out but didn't know where to turn for help. And with the average age of entry into trafficking being 12 to 14 years of age, how would those possible victims know where to turn for it? I have attended a wonderful public school since the start of my K-12 career that knows that educating us about the issues we face is as important as teaching us to read and write. When we saw our AIDS and HIV epidemic, we put prevention curriculums into our school, and with time, our HIV and AIDS rates have depleted significantly. A couple of years ago, teen pregnancy numbers were also at an all-time high, and with prevention curriculums, our teen pregnancy numbers are now at an all-time low. Mm. K-12 education is supposed to equip us, students, with the proper resources and knowledge to be good citizens and right wrongs where we see them. But we can't right the wrongs if we don't know about them. I'm here today as a high school student asking you to allow our public schools to give us information that will keep us safe and allow us to make our communities better. Parents, students, and teachers need the resources provided in the sexual exploitation prevention curriculums to prevent sex trafficking in our state. This legislature has worked miracles with the safe harbor laws passed in 2011. We no longer treat minor victims of sex trafficking as criminals. We provide survivors with the resources they are in most need of, whether that be housing, food, or education. Unfortunately, prior to my own inquiries into this, I had never even heard of safe harbor, and I'm sure that that is true for most other high school, middle school, and elementary school students. How are we students supposed to know who to reach out to if we are ever in these dire situations? I'm sure many high schoolers and some survivors may think that we will still be sent off to the juvenile detention center if we seek help or are caught by the police. Students deserve to know about the resources that are available to them. We could and should be capitalizing on our safe harbor resources. This law was passed to protect the children of Minnesota and I hope as a body we are able to move forward with this. Public school health curriculums do not suggest or mandate any form of sex trafficking education as of right now. But how do we know where to turn for help if we don't know where to turn for it? How are we supposed to know that the modeling job paying $2,000 a week offered to us in a mall may not be all what it seems? How are we supposed to know that we are not indebted to someone in the form of sexual favors? And more importantly, who is teaching us about respect, that humans cannot be bought and sold for sex? The answer is no one. 
We see this bill as a first common sense step towards preventing children and adults from falling victim to sexual exploitation, and most importantly, curbing the demand for these horrific acts in Minnesota. I just wanna say thank you again to all of the members on this committee and everyone that has signed on to this bill. It really means a lot to us. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. Welcome, say your name for the record and begin. Um, Madam Chair and members of the House Education, Innovation and Policy Committee, my name is Nyla Suse and I'm a junior at Hopkins High School. This topic is particularly important to me and it hits very close to home in more ways than one. I can think of a number of girls that go to my school and at an age as young as 13 have been sexually abused or assaulted. I have family and friends that have had to experience the terrifying reality of this issue. My mother was raped at the age of 14 in her own house. She had fallen into hanging around the wrong crowd, drinking and doing drugs. Although she was in this rugged environment, she thought she could trust the people she called friends and hung out with. She ended up locked in an apartment in St. Paul for several days, not allowed to leave. And my grandparents were worried she could have fallen into the trap of sexual exploitation. Today, she can't count or even remember the number of times she has been exploited, taken advantage of and abused both physically and sexually. The sexual abuse she endured at such a young and vulnerable time has affected the rest of her life. Raising awareness, implementing prevention curriculums, providing resources, and early awareness are crucial to helping a young person work through issues so a terrible incident like this can be prevented for the next generation. A friend of a friend was brought into the life of sex trafficking by her older sister while she was in middle school. Last year, when she was a junior in high school, she was shot and killed as a result of her falling victim to sexual exploitation. I believe that something like this could have been prevented by education and access to resources, and that is what brings me here today. Sex trafficking is not something that only affects a certain group of people. It affects people living in your day-to-day -day life, peers, coworkers, friends, and family. Please do not ignore this issue and put it into a box as only an inner city problem or woman's issue. People need to know that this is not a far off issue, but one that has affected the lives of many people across the state, including my own. We need to start focusing on preventing and helping the people who are at risk into falling into these horrible and unimaginable circumstances. I don't want to and cannot see another peer, friend, or family member be affected by this vicious and unforgiving cycle of sexual abuse and exploitation, especially when it is something we can work towards preventing. Thank you, Madam Chair and members, for inviting me here today to talk about this issue that is very important to me, and I hope you will take it seriously as well. And I believe that this bill is one of the first steps towards that. Thank you very much, both of you. Very well presented. Uh, will you please stay at the table, though? Because the custom is now that you get to answer our questions. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we want you to uh, stay, and if uh, uh, any of the other girls uh, wants to uh, add as questions come forward, uh, they are welcome to do so. So uh, Jessica, uh, you've led the charge on this. Have you visited with uh, teachers in Hopkins? Uh, I know we have a letter from uh, your superintendent uh, affirming uh, the work you're doing and and. Uh, laying out that uh, in her own tra training, she had uncovered some things. But in speaking with your teachers, uh, what's the reaction been? Did the health, uh, those who teach health, uh, envisioned a way to incorporate this into the curriculum? Jessica. We did speak, Madam Chair, thank you. Um, we did speak to uh, some of the teachers at our school and a couple of teachers from other schools as well. And I think that at first there was some leeriness with being the only school to incorporate this curriculum, but through talking to the principals and the health teachers and our superintendent again, um, they assured us that they would be able to look over the curriculums that are in place now and they would see if they could incorporate something like this into the curriculum. So uh, have you looked at some of the curricula that's available? There's a lot of nationally available curriculums, and I know that there's a lot of local curriculums as well that have been developed by nonprofits or other school agencies. And uh, Nyla, did you want to add anything to that uh, answer? Okay, uh, members, questions? Representative Pryor, well, Thank you, Madam. And thanks for your work. <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, it's, it's so good to see you here finally, um, because I know that this has been um, a, a long time in, in, in progress, and that it's taken a lot of effort and a lot of conversations, and um, just 
a lot of engagement to bring it to this step right now. And um, I, I know I speak, as we've already said, you know, on behalf of the committee here as well as the representatives that you'll, I think you'll go on to meet <laughs> as, this, as this bill works through the process, um, that we are thankful that you are taking this step forward and that when you've identified a problem, it's not just sitting back and, and waiting for someone else to come up with the solution, but you have taken the initiative and that that's a, a model for all of us. So um, can you, would you comment a little bit about the process of engaging with, with representatives to get something done? Because I think that's such a great learning experience for, for, um, for people that might want to follow in your footsteps. Jessica. Um, so earlier this year, after the speaker came and talked to us, um, Representative Lori Pryor actually came to one of our job fairs. And we reached out to her to see if there was anything that could be done um, at the state level with what we've been working on. And she was very welcome to our ideas. And then we hosted a community event where Representative Randy Jessup um, came as well. And they've been working very closely together on this issue. And I think that a lot of the other representatives have been very open to hearing what we think about this issue. And I think it's a very easy issue to get behind because we just know how horrible it is that it happens in our state. But everyone has been very welcome to hearing our concerns, and we're very thankful for that. Representative Pryor, follow-up. Thank you. Uh, Representative Ward. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you to all of the students who have worked so hard to bring this to us and, uh, and put it in such a good form. Question that I have is um, Hopkins leading the way. Who else is involved, and are all of the students here from Hopkins, or are they also representing some other schools who are working on this? Jessica. All of the students here today are from Hopkins. I know last week I attended a Rotary conference, and they've taken on human trafficking as an issue. And in the education cohort, there were a lot of students from other schools that have been engaging in this topic as well. And through talking to them, they've started conversations with their school board members about this issue as well. Thank you. Uh, Representative Bennett. Thank you, Madam Chair. And um, I, I wanted to add a few things, and I do have a question, too. But I had the honor of carrying the Aaron's Law Bill last year. And I want to thank you, young women, for bringing this forward, and also Representative Jessup and Representative Pryor. I think this is an excellent addition. It's, uh, it's very important. Um, I just want to commend you also, all of you young women, on your poise and your professionalism mm. and your willingness to engage in government. That's what we need, and so thank you for that. I'm just curious if you've had a chance to explore other school districts to see if any of them are um, teaching the sexual exploitation type things or if you've just kind of come upon dead ends with that. Do you have any information on that? Jessica. Representative Bennett, Madam Chair, we have, I've seen other school districts implement this curriculum, um, some from out of state. I know through talking to some of the Safe Harbor resources, there is a nationally used curriculum that are used in other states right now. And I'm, through talking to some other school districts, there are some schools that are using it, but it's very brief in their health curriculum and they think that they could probably focus on it some more. Thank you. Uh, Representative kunish Bedin. Good morning, thank you all for being here today. Uh, as a middle school teacher, I think this is really important that we are um, bringing this kind of resource to our, our students at such a young age so that um, as they grow, as they know these situations, they're able to advocate for others as well. And I know this group is um, an incredible group uh, within your community, your school community, and your whole community. And um, would you just tell us a little bit about how Girls United uh, began? And um, do you have plans for keeping it uh, relevant within your school district once you, once you all leave? Jessica. So Madam Chair and Representative kunish um Girls United was started when we were in seventh grade and it stemmed out of a conversation that we had in our science class after some of the boys had called us sandwich makers um, and they said that that's what we were supposed to do and our teacher addressed that issue 
And after that, we started reading different books about gender inequality in different schools around the world and in our in the United States as well. And then after that, we in eighth grade, we started meeting monthly and inviting different speakers from the community to come and talk to us about different issues that we wanted to hear more about. So we had a speaker come and talk to us about body image and perfectionism. We had a panel of women talk about their leadership positions. We've held job fairs. And in ninth grade, we started our um, reaching out to the younger girls in our community as well. And we hosted our first STEM Sunday where we invited, we had like 50 elementary school students come and the math and science teachers from our middle school came and did activities with them surrounding the four letters of STEM to promote women in STEM. And then last year, some of the parents of the younger girls had wanted us to continue meeting with them because their younger girls really enjoyed that and they wanted a platform to talk to older girls. And so we had a monthly meeting group for them where we talked about some of the similar issues that we had talked about when we first started. And this year when we came together with our youth advisory board, we, one of the questions that we were trying to address was what we were going to do after we graduated and we formed our leaders in training program with our middle school students now and we have about 12 or 13 girls that come to our planning meetings and they've been working really hard on trying to branch out into their school as well so that they can develop something similar to we, what we have at the high school level. Matthias, would you add a chair next to Jessica because uh, there are some girls I would like to have come forward to also speak from our Girls United group. Thank you. Representative kunish Padin, did you have a follow-up at all? No, I just wanted to say thank you again. Yes. And um, I hope this is a model for a lot of communities and schools in uh, leadership of young women. And uh, we expect to see all of you progress through that strong leadership role as you age and get older. So thank you all. Uh, Representative May Quaid. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you guys so much for being here. I uh, post the committee agendas on my Facebook page every day and I had some students reach out about this specific bill and this specific issue and they wanted me to ask you uh, what would be the first step that they could take. They have been talking to me about this. You're inspiring um, young students in my district in Apple Valley and so they wanted to know what would be the first step for them to take to organize in our community. Jessica. Madam Chair, Representative May Quaid, um, if they would like to connect with us, that's definitely a possibility but I think just banding together with a group of other students that they work well with and some students that maybe they don't know as well I think is really important. Uh, I'd like to call, uh, I think that's Leah, you're the coordinator, uh, the webmaster of the advisory board. Would you come up and talk a little bit about what you're doing uh, as the webmaster? Please say your name for the record and then begin. Leah Harrell. Madam Chair, as webmaster, I document a lot of our events, such as STEM Sunday and the job fairs. I take pictures and I post them online for people to view, and we have a comment page for people to reach out and contact us if they have any questions. Um, I'm currently working on pages that explain more about our leaders and training program and our younger girls and what we do for them, and developing um, a page for our sex trafficking awareness. Program. So is it a web, uh, a web address that we access or uh, are you doing other means as well? Would, if, if it's a web address, would you give it? Um, I, or whatever the way is that we can get involved in this? There is a website. Um, I can provide you with the website uh, shortly. I do not have it off the top of my head, but um, we also have a Facebook page and a Twitter account that we use to reach out to our community and keep them involved with all of our events. And is your Facebook page then called uh, Girls United or what? Yes, Girls United MN. Very good, thank you. And you know, you might want to talk to uh, uh, the uh, representatives from the Department of Education today. Mr. Adosh Uni is in the audience and there might be a way to link you know, with the Department of Education. I don't know if that can of be officially done, but certainly it's going to be a benefit to the educational process. And the Department of Education, as you know, is our department that does coordinate educational efforts. So uh, I think that would be very good. Uh, thank you very much, Leah. Is there any question for Leah as webmaster? 
then I'd like to call forth Mary O'Neill to talk about fundraising. It seems like uh, we could get involved in here uh, in, privately as uh, we help you. Please say your name for the record and talk about the fundraising efforts. Um, Mary O'Neill. Madam Chair, as far as fundraising, this is something that earlier when we were first starting, we didn't really think about. But as we've began to do more projects and more expensive projects, our STEM Sunday and canvas paintings, we want to donate those supplies and the products to the school so the money comes from us. We've had to look further into fundraising options. And there's a few fundraisers that we plan on having, and we also had an informative, informative evening where we had people who were able to donate money. And recently, we've received money from the Hopkins Youth Hockey Association, and we're continuing to reach out and look for grants and things like that. Very good. Thank you. Uh, we'll be sure we learn about that uh, specifically so that uh, those of us who want to help you could do so. Uh, Emma Rock, talk about uh, programming, please. Hello, I'm Emma Rock. Um, Madam Chair, as programming coordinator, I help coordinate the events for elementary school, junior high, and high school girls. I not only book the spaces where we'll be meeting, but I help write up the agendas. And with Jessica and everyone else's help, we choose what we'll be discussing. And for the LIT program, we help book speakers for them and help implement leadership abilities into their so-called curriculum so they can help expand on what we started a while ago. And could you share with us some that you've brought in as special speakers? Sure. We had a speaker who helped MC the Women's March and talked about mm -hmm. women in her field and leadership and how we can all be strong as leaders and really speak with our own voices, which was really beneficial for the girls and helped them break out of their shell a little bit. Very good. Well, you girls are all so poised. I'm so very proud of you, and I know we all are, and so impressed with your skills. Uh, Sarah Lee Reed, would you come forward and talk about uh, outreach and what you might be doing in that area. Um, hello, I am Sally Reed. Um, Madam Chair, as community outreach coordinator, I um, spend a lot of time reaching out to students, both by voice or texting, um, just letting everyone know about the events that we're having and making sure that students have opportunities to stay involved. Um, I do a lot of outreach through Twitter at Girls United MN, if you're interested in following. Um, <laughs> and just in that way, we can utilize social media and stay current um, with utilizing those tools and letting everyone know about the work that we're doing. Excellent. And Emily, on uh, the prevention, uh, what could you share with us uh, as far as what you've been doing so far? Um, Madam Chair. Please say your name for the record and begin. <laughs> Madam Chair, I'm Emily Kirk. And with the prevention, I help plan some of the events and also spread the awareness. Um, and so we do things like have speakers just to spread awareness about the issue so that it can be prevented and spread awareness. Very good. Um, Salma, uh, your secretary, I would imagine you're busy uh, keeping minutes of all these meetings. Maybe you could tell us uh, how many reams of paper you've used so far in minutes or word processed, how many pages. Welcome. Please say your name for the record and begin. Salma Saeed. Um, we've only had one board meeting so far, but um, basically I just do the notes and make sure that everybody's up to date on everything. And yeah, that's basically what I do. Are you making them uh, some... Uh, 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 use Robert's Rules of Order, I mean, so you have some organization or... Uh... <laughs> Thank you very much. And uh, Lily, you're the vice president, so I would imagine on the advisory board you have to meet constantly with uh, your group to uh, get ideas. So please say your name for the record. Uh, my name is Lily Zedeklik. Uh Madam Chair, as vice president, uh, I kind of just support Jessica with whatever she needs and um, I meet with the legal team uh, whenever Jessica goes to meet. And then also uh, as vice president, like I said, I support Jessica. I kind of do the odds and ends and anything she needs done and so that's my role in the group. 
that's that's a perfect role to have because she needs and all of you need to work together so that is great to hear uh, Elizabeth you're the treasurer you don't have to tell us how much you have in the Treasury but uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'd like to know how things are going uh, in that operation because this you've you've begun a large uh, an organization that could become very large and expansive so you, you're great business women already Please say your name for the record. Uh, yes, Madam Chair. Uh, my name is Elizabeth Siriani. Um, as treasurer, well, I, I don't really have a lot of formal training in uh, like finance work, so our um, official board, we have an official treasurer who takes care of a lot of the more official accounting things. Um, I keep track of the money and I help with fundraising with Mary and I also play a role with supporting Jessica as well. Uh, so I'm kind of a, a mix of everything, just due to the fact of lack Very of good, thank you. Now, is there anyone else in the audience who would like to speak on behalf of this group? I think I, I think every uh, one of you spoke, correct? Yes. Is there anyone else? Uh, is there any uh, one who would like to testify on behalf of uh, this uh, proposal? Please come forward and. And girls, you can just stay there still. <laughs> we like having you in front of us. <laughs> Matthias, can you help out maybe just another chair? Matthias, there's one over here too that you could bring. Welcome to our committee and you know the routine. Please say your name for the record and then uh, speak. Thank you, Madam Chair and members of the committee. My name is Beth Holger Ambrose, and I work for a nonprofit called The Link. The Link was formed 27 years ago by Jim Marshall and Oscar Reed, who used to play for the Minnesota Vikings. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, they formed the organization in North Minneapolis to address um, young people who are experiencing homelessness and poverty and getting um, recruited to be involved in juvenile crime or being victimized by juvenile crime. Since that time, we've um, grown a lot um, over the 27 years, and so we have programs now. We're still based in North Minneapolis, but we've grown to the entire Twin Cities metro area, and we provide programs in the area of juvenile justice, alternative programs, housing, and, and supportive services for youth that are experiencing homelessness or young families experiencing homelessness, and emergency shelter, um, housing, and supportive services for youth that have been sex trafficked in coordination with our larger safe harbor law, which we really appreciate all of your support on that law, by the mm -hmm. way, too. Um, so I'm just here today to really strongly support this bill and Girls United. Um, we're very thankful for all of your support for um, Representative Pryor and for Representative Jessup for bringing this forward, and most of all for Girls United for, for taking a stand and taking all the time and hard work and bravery that you've done. Um, they approached myself at the link because we work with sex trafficked youth to do this, um, to partner on this, and we're very, very excited about it. Um, I, have, I just want to also state that sex trafficking is a huge problem in Minnesota. Um, at the link, we see youth who have been sex trafficked from the suburbs, from the inner city, mm -hmm. from rural areas, and from American Indian reservations. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to let my um, esteemed colleague talk more about our actual services and our prevention campaign work that we have. But I would like to tell you a few stories just to paint the picture of the kinds of youth that we're seeing. So one of um, the young pers people that we served when we opened our shelter for three years, three and a half years ago now, um, is, a, is a boy, 16-year-old white boy from the southwest suburbs. Uh, he was in a home where he was very well loved by one of his parents, but he self-identified as a gay person and was in a community where he didn't, he felt pretty isolated and so as many young gay um, youth do, went online to try to learn more about himself and um, find some support and unfortunately he was groomed by a person online um, that was from a different state actually and he was groomed and then eventually trafficked by that person. Um, thankfully a concerned family friend um, brought, um, referred him to the link and so we were able to work with him and his father and provide a lot of therapy and intervention and also bring his trafficker um, to justice so he was prosecuted. Um, another example um, is that there was a young girl, um, unfortunately, she, you know, many of these young people too, no one has the choice of what circumstances they're born into. So this is one of those situations. Um, she grew up in South Minneapolis and um, was born to parents who were both drug addicted to crack. So her mom 
um, was never really around. Her mom was actually also a trafficking victim involved in a life addicted to crack. Her dad was an alcoholic and addicted to crack, and she stayed with him, but he didn't really take care of her, obviously. So she started meeting friends at age 10, 11. Um, unfortunately, one of those friends was being trafficked by her own family. And so that friend inadvertently invited her over, and then the family started trafficking both of them. She was only 11. Huh. Um, and has been trafficked since then by multiple traffickers, multiple ways. Um, fortunately, she actually is still quite involved at the link. Um, she's on our advisory committee because we're a youth and adult-led organization, and she's doing much better. Um, and then we also have served a young person. Um, I'll just say, right, you know, the rural areas are so small, I don't want to say specifics, but um, she is from a small city in Wright County, and um, her parents had no idea she was being trafficked. Uh, however, she had been recruited and approached by a very dangerous trafficker that approached her like he was her boyfriend, like he was interested in her. Um, turned out he was not only, I mean, he ended up trafficking her after you know befriending her, and also ended up to be quite violent. He actually was um, charged not only with trafficking of minors, but with a homicide in St. Cloud. So um, she also is doing very well. Now this was like two year, a year or two ago. Um, but these are just some of the sto many, many stories that we see every day at the link. And um, this is why we desperately need you to support this bill because these young people are being recruited by traffickers. Um, if not, if they weren't born into the situation, they're getting recruited between the ages of 12 and 14. And we need to get to them before the traffickers do. And if we don't, then it's on us as a community. Um, so we're just really hopeful that we can all um, really support putting this into our schools because otherwise this is gonna continue to happen. So thank you very much for having us today. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, excellent uh, information that you've provided and thank you for your work. Uh, welcome and please say your name for the record and begin. And you know, you can move the microphone so that you don't have to uh, feel uncomfortable. Thank you, Madam Chair and members of the committee. My name is Keisha, it's Q-U-I-S-H-A, Keisha Stewart, and I'm the Safe Harbor Division Director at The Link. And um, to speak to you briefly today about services and how grateful we are for the connection and the partnership that we have with Girls United. Um, we serve sexually, sexually exploited youth, sorry, and uh, we have a housing and a um, an emergency shelter program for kids 13 through 17. Our housing program can serve youth up until age 24. Um, on the emergency shelter side, our number one goal is to get the youth stabilized. Oftentimes when youth come into our emergency shelter, they don't even understand that they have been exploited. If I'm a 14-year-old girl and I've had a 25-year-old boyfriend, and this is the norm for me because I don't have anyone at home to give me guidance, this is the norm. This person is who is allowing me to be able to purchase things here and there. However, we get the kids into the shelter and then we teach them about unsafe and unhealthy relationships and we teach them about grooming and things of that nature and oftentimes they're in our program that full 90 days before they realize okay maybe this isn't right so I, i'm totally excited about girls united and young women who are so eager and so professional and so engaged in this situation because oftentimes when people hear about exploitation they have a specific type of victim in mind the, the, your victim looks a certain way in your mind, and this partnership with Girls United, it supports the notion that anyone can be exploited. Any kid can be exploited. Vulnerability is what brings exploitation. And if you think about that, any teenage child is vulnerable at some point in time when they're working to figure out who they are, what they stand for, the morals and values of their own as opposed to what has been taught to them. So we provide services that meet those basic needs for youth that have been exploited, while at the same time allowing them to understand that this is something that happened to you and not who you are. And so I value the work that we do. I value partnerships. I value young women with the wherewithal as the women of Girls United because this is an issue that if we get behind the youth and understand that it's more about their vulnerabilities, meeting those needs so that they're not susceptible to that harm, then we can make a greater impact. And so I'm grateful to be here today. I'm grateful to provide the services that we provide to boys, girls, transgender youth, any kid that is at risk of or has been confirmed, exploited, we have services to give. And if we don't have them, we will partner with an agency that does because we believe in this effort. And if we can stop exploitation early on, we can minimize the impact of it in our state. So thank you. 
Thank you, Ms. Stewart. Are there questions for these two testifiers? Representative Pryor. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I, I understand that you've had work already on a possible curriculum for schools. Could you say a little bit about that and also the process that you used to create it? Ms. Hugger Ambrose. Uh, Madam Chair and Representative Pryor, thank you so much for that question because that was one of the ones that Keisha and I um, want to address. So one of the things about the link that makes us unique is that we're a youth and adult led nonprofit, including being Viking led. So we have um, youth with lived experience of sex trafficking, juvenile justice involvement and homelessness who are on advisory boards. They're paid part-time positions, but they're youth who have been through our programs and frankly are, are the experts. So they help us to design our programs. They help Keisha and I to interview and hire staff. They do a lot of work. They actually were down here quite a bit uh, many of them to help pass the safe harbor law. Um, and so at any rate, one of the ideas they had about two years ago was we really need to do a prevention curriculum that makes sense for youth, that's written by those of us who have been through it and know how to talk about it and know how to warn other younger youth about it. And so um, Keisha and I wrote a grant to the Women's Foundation and fortunately got funding for their idea. And then we worked with our um, survivor advisory members, which are, they've all been sex trafficked, and um, partnered with a local marketing firm called NAC to develop a prevention campaign called I Am Priceless, which was created and named by the youth. Um, and part of that, um, you might see signs because fortunately, as a, a side note, the link also led the efforts around providing increased services for trafficked youth and adults during the 10 days of the Super Bowl. So part of that was the NFL picked up the I Am Priceless prevention campaign as one of their anti-trafficking messages. So we were able to get a lot of paid, donated, donated paid media, excuse me, which has been wonderful. So the piece we would like to continue to work on with NAC is finalizing the curriculum, which we will be doing this spring. So the timing of Girls United coming to us was just incredible because we will have a, a, a specialized local curriculum. Um, it's based off of my life, my choice, but it's specialized for Minnesota and targeting the 12 to 14-year-old um, range. And what's your communication, uh, Representative Pryor, if you don't mind my interrupting, uh, what is your communication with rural Minnesota, like the American Indian Reservations, where I know, and you mentioned there's sex trafficking. What's your communication to get the word out about what you have available in addition to uh, promoting Girls United? Ms. Stewart, did you want to answer that? or? Yes, um, our communication, we work very closely with the regional navigators throughout the state. Okay. And so our navigators share that information with the, the other navigators when they work together. We share kids between each other. Most of the time kids that are, oftentimes kids that are in the cities will say, I just need to get away, otherwise I won't be able to get okay. help. So we work very closely and we share that information with them as well. Representative Pryor, you had a follow up, so please. I, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. The other part of it um, that caught my attention is I've heard the Don't Buy It campaign, and any comment on that? <laughs> Ms. Uh, Ms. Ambrose or Ms. Stewart? Okay, uh, thank you, Madam Chair and Representative Pryor. So in addition to the mm -hmm. Women's Foundation funding and the NFL funding the I Am Priceless campaign, they also provided support for a, um, a complimentary campaign called Don't Buy It which is out of a great organization called Men as Peacemakers in Duluth. They're a close partner of the Lynx. Um, they are basically looking at, while we're trying to really educate youth about um, recruitment tactics and that they should never be bought and sold, they don't deserve that, um, the Don't Buy It project by Men as Peacemakers is looking at the demand. So knowing that the majority of buyers are, are men, um, they are looking at the demand and how we can inform men that it isn't a victimless crime, that there are victims, um, mm -hmm. that it's, you know, that it's not just, it's hurtful to people, it's impactful on people. And so they've done an incredible job of reaching um, that demand audience and are continuing. They're definitely not done. They're continuing to work on that. Very good. Are there other questions for these two testifiers? Thank you very, oh, I'm sorry, Representative Haley. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just to follow up to what you said, I'm wondering about the connection with pornography. And I know there's a couple bills this session that we'll all be uh, reviewing related to stopping the, the, the demand on pornography and how that then links into uh, exploitation of youth. Can you comment on that? Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. Madam Please Chair. comment. Oh, sorry. Madam, thank you, Madam Chair and um, members of the committee. 
What I would say about that is that um, there definitely can be a link between pornography and sexual exploitation. Not always. There isn't always a link between those two. Um, there's definitely pornography that doesn't ha that is not attached to sex trafficking. Um, however, um, what we see sometimes is if a trafficker takes or a buyer takes a picture of one of our youth or video, they can use that as leverage against them. So we see that happening. So taking pornographic pictures or videos and then they can use that against them. Um, oh, well, if I show this to people, you're going to get your baby taken away. Um, you know, you don't want your grandma seeing this posted up on social media, et cetera. So we see that happening, I think, a little bit more often. Um, there definitely are some, um, some youth that we've worked with that have been exploited in pornography and or strip clubs too, but it doesn't always tie hand in hand. It's kind of complicated. Sorry. Representative Haley. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just to follow up to, uh, to the young women here, thanks. I echo my colleagues' uh, gratitude for what you've done. Um, but something to consider as you grow that link to pornography and just the, um, maybe there's a similar effort that young men your age can wrap their heads around and stopping the, the use of pornography at such a young age because I do think that in some way is a, is a feeder into all these issues. Um, my other just suggestion, connect with other nonprofits that work in child abuse. Um, I know they would be eager to partner with you. I have one in my county that's very active and there may be some federal grants that you can access in addition to state grants. The OJP, the Department of um, Justice, uh, has grants in these areas and that might be something that you want to look into but um, best of luck and charge forward, don't give up. So thank you uh, to these two testifiers. Uh, so you may return to your places uh, and we want to hear from Jessica and Nyla. Oh, do we have another? Oh, sure, come forward. And Jessica and Nyla, you just stay there because you'll give closing comments in just a minute uh, before Representative Jessup uh, returns. Please say your name for the record to begin. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. My name is Caroline Palmer. I'm the Public and Legal Affairs Manager at the Minnesota Coalition Against Sexual Assault. And I just wanted to thank Representative Jessup and Representative Pryor and Representative Kunish Podine and everybody who has come forward to support Girls United Minnesota. And we do support this legislation wholeheartedly. Um, we've been meeting with Jessica and with her group, and um, they have been doing so much legwork in the nonprofit mm -hmm. community to build uh, collaboration. And I just want to say how much we admire everything that they're doing. Um, Mincasa is actually the home of the Safe Harbor Protocol Guidelines. We developed those guidelines in collaboration with the Ramsey County Attorney's Office thanks to legislative appropriation. We're also the protocol implementation site for Safe Harbor in Minnesota thanks to a Department of Health grant. So we are integrally involved working with groups like The Link and many others. And so it's just so exciting for us to see young people who are stepping up the youth and the survivor voices are the ones who we think will really make a change. And so I just wanted to say thank you to the committee for giving so much space and opportunity for our young testifiers today and urge your support. Thank you, Ms. Palmer. Are there any questions for Ms. Palmer? Thank you. Closing comments now from our two uh, main testifiers, uh, Jessica and Nyla. Uh, <laughs> Just kind of sum up what it is you're uh, expecting out of this uh, and for the future. Madam Chair and members of the committee, first and foremost, I would just like to thank all of you for inviting us to be here today. Um, I know as high school students, we took civics in ninth grade, and seeing how the process works in real life is, I think, really just a great opportunity for us as high school students. But I would also like to thank you for taking this issue seriously. I know that last year with Aaron's Law, that was a really big step forward and hopefully we can continue to build on that momentum. I really do want to thank you, like I said, for taking this issue seriously and I hope that we can move forward with it. Thank you. And Nyla, closing comment? Madam Chair and um, Education Committee, I would just like to thank you for having us here today and um, for all your support in trying to move forward with this. And thank you very much uh, for your efforts. I mean, this is just an incredible experience for us to have you come forward and be so organized, so articulate, so professional. And I know there's a, a very promising future for us in this area because of your leadership. So thank you. Representative Jessup, will you return to the testifying table and uh, we'll make sure you're Bill uh, moves here. 
Closing comments, Representative Jessup. Madam Chair, members of the committee, uh, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for allowing uh, these students to really share their story. And just their efforts have expanded well beyond uh, us today. And as you, ha I think, I have in your packet, we have a letter from um, Congressman Paulson. Mm -hmm. Also, um, they reached out and Senator Amy Klobuchar uh, communicated with them and actually provided them a video response that they went ahead and presented at uh, one of their events. It was not for sale, uh, standing up to self or to sex trafficking. An event that they put on mid-February, I think it was February 15th, uh, over in, in Hopkins, and they had 200 people in attendance with a, with a panel of seven, uh, from attorneys to law enforcement to investigators, as well as uh, people in nonprofits that service uh, those that have been trafficked or exploited. One other comment that I would just like to make, we have had the focus today and, and perhaps um, and our perception is, is more upon uh, the women in the audience because that is where we anticipate seeing predominantly sexual exploitation, sexual traffic happening. But as we had done a, a media conference, um, I want to say about a month ago, we had the pleasure of having the Hopkins uh, principal with us in speaking, and I thought he made an appropriate point as, as we kind of conclude here, and that is this is not just um, a concern for our female students or our young women, it is also a concern for our student boys and our young men. This is a topic that needs to be for both sexes uh, to really understand respect for one another and what is right behavior and what is wrong behavior. So I, I hope you keep that in mind as, as we move this forward. So thank you, Madam Chair. With that, I would like to move this bill forward. So uh, I think there's some questions. Representative Mariani, so please stay <laughs> before we uh, complete. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Representative Jessup, for bringing us uh, this bill, and I concur with your, your closing comments. I suspect uh, this bill will, will get uh, unanimous support here. Uh, I do have some questions, however. Um, I carried a bill uh, many, many years ago now <clears throat> related um, to creating a tort action uh, related to uh, coerce, uh, coercion into prostitution, which frankly, there really is no other way. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. folks are coerced into that. And um, one of the big learnings for me at that time, consistent with what you had before, before us, was um, the incredibly early age in which um, this tragedy um, is um, uh, created on, on an individual. And so it was pretty clear to all of us here that there's a massive uh, effort consistently targeting, targeting very, very young people. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking at uh, represent, or Superintendent Mihripiri uh, Reitz um, from Hopkins' uh, letter here where she talks about Minnesota um, being the 13th largest market for human traffickers, a $9 billion industry, 8 to 14,000 victims uh, per year. Um, she goes on to talk about uh, how that's going to be primarily young people uh, in our schools. So I know that this statute, uh, the, the structure of the stat statute um, is permissive language. Um, you know, uh, on line 215, we have may include, um, and so you have re repetition of that. So my first question is, uh, have you given thought to going beyond uh, having permissive language um, uh, relative to what we should be ex expecting of our public schools in terms of uh, properly educating and preventing and preparing uh, young people from uh, from being sexually exploited. Representative Jessup. Chair Erickson, Representative Mariani, I, I have to be honest, I have not at this point. Um, I, will, I will confess to you that I am encouraged to move this forward just as our Representative Bennett did similarly last session where it's an opportunity for school districts to weigh in and to consider if this is a subject that they want to pursue. And I think for the most part, I think we will see that occur. Uh, based upon the awareness, I think, that has been created not only by Jessica Girls United, um, the link 
also all of the publicity that came out for, of the Super Bowl and, and the concern for sex traffic. I think we will see this really germinate on its own and I anticipate that we will see school districts take these actions on their own. It's clearly that is the desired goal. Um, I think whenever something is self-initiated by a school district or the parents in that particular school district is concerned for their students and for their children, that is really the aspect that we want to see. But I, I fully understand where you're, where you're coming from and, and your concern. And yes, I think it could be a consideration perhaps in the future. Um, I, I'm not going to put a timetable on it, but I would certainly like to see what germinates and is initiated from school districts first before we were to proceed and, and make that consideration. Representative Mariani. And fair, and fair enough, Representative Jessup. I mean, we, we constantly struggle with mandates uh, mm -hmm. on our public institutions, particularly on our public schools. Um, however, um, one can make some pretty uh, good arguments that some mandates are just plain old necessary in common sense because of the uh, impact on the public, you know, really outweighs, one could argue, uh, the hassle, if you will, the, the extra work and effort, uh, the prescriptive nature of, of uh, statutory law on, on, on public schools. Uh, I suspect that, what, well, I know that one of the reasons we get pushback on mandates is because they often uh, or many times don't come with resources. Uh, have you thought about resources relative to this, uh, this uh, empowerment, empowering language uh, for our public schools? I, I note that there's no fiscal uh, piece here, but just give, give us your thoughts about what do you know about um, school districts' ability to have resources to carry this work out? Um, I'm guessing that smaller, the smaller the, the school district, which pro probably means out in greater Minnesota, the more this could be potentially uh, a difficult thing for them to do. Representative Jessup. Madam Chair, Representative Mariani. Initially, um, I will say when Representative Pryor and I were kind of reviewing this particular legislation along with some of our Senate <coughs> colleagues, that was a discussion point. Should there be appropriations involved in this? And the kind of the, the consensus I will say opinion was no we really want to move this forward as quickly as possible um, we believe that the efforts of, of Jessica her peers and Girls United is a good one and we should capitalize now upon the opportunity to really get this message out and get it communicated not only to ourselves but also the communities all across Minnesota and yes, certainly there is, uh, whenever we do a mandate, as you well know, there is the desire to have funding to go along with it. I would just, I would just counsel and um, represent Mariani that if we were to get to that point and consider a mandate, consider funding and so forth, I would greatly appreciate getting the perspective of school districts, both of those that will be initiating actions on their own, as well as those that perhaps find that they need additional guidance and support as well as resources to do so. So I would say I would encourage us to at least take the next two to three years as kind of a, a process to be able to say how is this legislation having an impact in our schools and do we need to do more? Let us use in the next two to three years to determine um, the answers to those questions. Yeah, sure. Representative Mariani. Yeah, sure. and, and again I concur with you. Um, how, how will we know that? Uh, what, and, and perhaps our, our, our legal counsel can help us, uh, what, is there something in play that informs us, that will inform us in a year or two or three relative to the statute of, of what progress is uh, being made? Representative Jessup. Uh, Chair Sarah? Erickson, <laughs> Representative Mariani. Um, I, I will say, I am not so much concerned what will be in a legal analysis. Quite honestly, I will say it will be, it will be students and it will be others mm -hmm. like Jessica, Girls United, that will be telling us. They will be communicating to us. If efforts are not being accomplished, I anticipate that we here in the legislature will be hearing about it. I have been very, very encouraged, um, and perhaps this is philosophical to say this, but I have been very, very encouraged by Girls United, their efforts to form, to really become passionate about 
you know, subjects of interest to them, and I think they are going to have a meaningful impact for the students that come after them in their particular community and also communities across the country. We may all have very different, um, you know, opinions um, and thoughts regarding what happened in Florida just a couple weeks ago. But I, I mentioned last week to a group at the University of Minnesota, I think one of the silver linings that is coming out of that is the emergence of high school students adding their voice to the discussion. You know, we can go back and forth, pro and con, on this particular issue and so forth, but I think the advocacy that we have seen from students rising up here, right here in this committee room, as well as students elsewhere across the country, I think should give us all hope. Hope and encouragement that those are coming after us want to be involved, they want to be heard, and Representative Mariani, I think they will be heard. If this is an issue that we need to further go forward with in terms of mandate, in terms of funding, I think we will hear from these students and we will hear from constituents that that is the right choice. My hope is that the efforts here that you have heard today will germinate and again that school districts all across this state will take this matter seriously and take this matter into their own hands and establish the, the in instruction and the prevention for sexual exploitation on their own. Thank you. Representative Mario. Ma Madam Chair, Representative Jessup, um, I share your optimism and your, your um, aspiration for us. Um, I, I can tell you that unless we are being very diligent about proactively, uh, assertively gathering information, um, more often than not, we will not get the information we need to properly legislate. And so just keep an open mind, you know, in terms of what, my, I mean, you have a good bill and I support it, mm -hmm. um, but please keep an open mind in terms of what else we should be doing to make sure that we're receiving the kind of information that allows us to assess our policies as well as assess our investments so that we can make those better. Um, but it's a good start. I, I commend you for it and uh, for all the folks that worked on this. Uh, Madam Chair, is the motion to send this uh, to the floor? Or is this going to another? This is being uh, laid over. It is. All right. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Jessup. Uh, Mr. Oni, uh, are you willing to come forward and make a comment about the involvement that the commissioner might have in this uh, addition to what we did last year? Uh, if you, if you would be so kind as to uh, lend some support. So before our Girls United leave and others that uh, they know the commissioner uh, is behind this and what uh, could be done. Uh, welcome to our committee, Mr. Uni. Please say your name for the record and begin. Madam Chair, uh, committee members, my name is Adosh Uni. I'm the Director of Government Relations at the Department of Education. Um, Madam Chair, we had the uh, opportunity to speak with Jessica several months back. Um, she consulted us as she consulted many, many people um, about the construction of this bill and we discussed what the, <clears throat> the department um, was able to offer in terms of institutional support. Um, the way the bill is drafted now um, I think reflects what the department is able to do in terms of providing support um, for um, channeling channeling districts inquiring for technical assistance, the appropriate resources. Um, this is um, where our, our professional staff is more than um, prepared to provide the support to districts um, who are looking to enhance their curriculum around this issue area. Um, you've heard from MinCASA. We um, have been um, connected with them and can provide resources connected with them. Um, and. Um, our, uh, again, our professionals um, have also met with um, um, have met with Jessica and spoken with her about what they're able to do. Um, so the department is able to provide um, resources for um, for districts looking to enhance their curriculum. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uni. Are you also able to uh, lead them in a direction if there might be some federal uh, dollars available, for example, or grants? Uh, because I know the department has a long list of grants that come uh, through federal dollars or otherwise through private sources. Are you able to give them some advice on that area? Yeah, Madam Chair, uh, committee members, as with all areas, um, we're able to, of the grants or other funding opportunities that we're aware of, 
um, we're able to provide direction and technical assistance with all, all who inquire. Thank you, Mr. Oney. Uh, closing, closing comment, Representative Jessup, and I believe you have treats uh, in the back of the room too, so uh, I don't think he wants anyone to leave here who might want to uh, enjoy a treat. And where did the treats, uh, are they? M Madam Chair, on, on this particular occasion, um, I simply went to Dunkin' Donuts and <laughs> gathered some donuts for all of you, and by all means, I would appreciate not having to take any with me as we all depart today. So please um, indulge yourself. And thank you for that uh, offer. Uh, we'll appreciate it. With that, Madam Chair, I just uh, would ask to move this bill forward yes. for inclusion. Thank you. Uh, and. Uh, I will make that motion in just a moment to uh, re reiterate what Representative Jessup said, but uh, girls, uh, we are indebted to your presentation, to you today for your presentation. Uh, as I said earlier, you are professional, uh, you are uh, very articulate, and uh, I think there's great hope that your group is going to lead us in the right direction and set an example across the state. So our best wishes go with you. Uh, and with that, the chair lays over House File 2768 for possible inclusion in an omnibus bill. Thank you very much.